Today we start our devotional series on the Gospel of John, which is what this book was given to you for. Um, over the next 40 days, as we walk through this season of Lent, uh, we're going to be reading through this Gospel, often referred to as the fourth Gospel. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it comes forth of other three, are called the Synoptic Gospels because they follow a very similar outline. John, who writes much later, he is the disciple uh, one of the, in, in the inner circle, uh, Peter, James, and John, he is uh, often referred to as the disciple that Jesus loved. That, that's how he refers to himself. Uh, he was much younger than the others, uh, but at the end of his life, he writes the Gospel of John. And he writes it, he tells us why he writes it in John 20. Now, Jesus did many other things, uh, many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in the book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. So um, we then have this powerful opening. I shouldn't say we then. We open with this very powerful opening. And it is, in the beginning was the Word, okay, the Logos. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Uh, he, everything that came into being came into being through him. Apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. I stumbled over that because I tried to memorize it in more than one um, version, and now I'm just eternally messed up. But uh, right out of the gate, what we are being told is that uh, the one we're going to read about for the next, you know, 20 chapters, the one who 19 chapters later is going to climb onto the cross and die for us. What we're being told right in the beginning of John's gospel is that Jesus is God. He is the Logos, the Greek word here. From You can tell we get our word logic from this. And, and John is speaking to the Greek philosophers. So Matthew writes to the Jews, Mark sort of the Romans, Luke writes to the Gentiles. John writes to the Greek philosophers, they have a failed project. They have been trying to figure out what the purpose of humans was. They couldn't, they couldn't agree on themselves. Philosophy's sort of gone for a thousand years and it hasn't arrived at any answers. They're missing this uh, understanding of this, this main piece. And, and John sort of in one sense writes to say, the piece you're missing, right? The piece that explains everything, the logic uh, the Word, uh, the Word was God, and the Word was present with God, and He is the Creator. So we're being told, as we start the Gospel of John, you're going to be reading through the Gospel of John, and each day uh, there's going to be a devotion with the passage that you are reading. Um, and so what we're being told is that Jesus is God. The one we're going to be reading about is God. The one who is going to die for us is God who has taken on human flesh. While remaining fully God, he is going to become fully human. And uh, he is going to die to save us. So we should be reading what we're reading here in the Gospel of John the next 40 days. We should be reading this with a sense of awe uh, and amazement as people become alert to who uh, Jesus is. So John is an eyewitness to all of this. He focuses his gospel, of course, on the parts that he's an eyewitness to. He wasn't an eyewitness to Jesus's early years, but he's an eyewitness to the last, um, uh, last three years of Christ's life. And in particular, that last week is where he focuses most of his attention. So the writer of Hebrews um, opens Hebrews 1, and it's, it has a, you know, Colossians and John and Hebrews. There's some of these books that just have these big, powerful introductory uh, kind of lead-ins. And the, the writer of Hebrews says, Long ago, many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, who always was and will be, is the ultimate, decisive, and final word of God to the entire world. So may the Lord illuminate truth to us as we begin uh, down this path. Uh, may we come to a greater appreciation that the, that the creator and sustainer, the savior of the world, the son of God, the second person of the Trinity, the one who holds everything together, the one who created everything everywhere, the one to whom all uh, power and authority has been given, all glory will be given. Um, may we read in awe as we read about his 
efforts to rescue you and me and win us back into a relationship, uh, an eternal relationship, loving relationship with God the Father. Have a good day.